Okay. We've gone live. <gasps> We're live. Wait, we are live. We're Hooray. live. Wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, welcome to my channel. I'm Susie Q. And I'm Michael Vegas. And um, we are live. Um, I'm going to say. And alive. Mostly. Like, it's spooky season. It's <laughs> hard to tell sometimes. Super hard to tell. Okay. There's the link. Excellent. And we can tell them where to start too, so we don't have to Okay, let's uh let's give ourselves five minutes. Okay. Yeah, so that's great. That's really cool. Oh, five minutes. Copy. Great. Now I'm gonna send it to you. I can't do anything on my phone. It's recording. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Oh, it's where it's linked to that. Yeah. I mean, it kind of has to be. Yeah, no, I understand. So, certified. Okay. This is great. Oh, we already have somebody watching. Hello. Hello. It's probably Lydia. <laughs> We're getting started. We're going to like start officially in five minutes. I'm going to like post to all the channels. Please follow me on, I'm gonna type it here, Twitter. I'm actually, I'm Susie Q Media on everything. Although my Snapchat recently changed. I think I'm FQ fan club on Snapchat now. Susie Q Media. Twitter and IG. And on Snapchat, I am. What am I? Oh yeah, SQ Fan Club, formerly Real Whore. Um, but I think that one might be Zesta Fosted. 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 Australian. American for censorship. Exactly. Yeah, no. Always tell a Foster's joke if you can. Yes, I hate. I know, that's why that one's down here. Oh. <laughs> so if we come down here too. Where's my phone? Okay. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> so people can actually talk to us, please? So people can actually talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> you don't log into your own stream. Wow. So you get sucked super, into the void. Super creepy. Avoid the Copy. void. Okay, let's tell everybody on Instagram what's going on. They have to know. They're dying to know. They're dying to know. Look how lit we are. It's lit. It's well lit in it here. It is very well lit in here. <laughs> it is a Friday night. We are getting lit. Uh, swipe up right now to join us live on YouTube. Uh, we're talking about polyamory and answering your questions. Let's do it. Do swipe it. Up. Lit. It's well lit in here. Okay. I'm going to start this later so I can actually tweet things. Yes. Do you want to pause it? I did. Oh, okay. Okay. You have one minute. Oh, God. Okay. Um, and then we're going to ask people a question. Where's the questions? Chat, donation. Questions are good. Ah, yeah. Um, ask us your. And non monogamy questions. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Side up to what? Five. Yeah. Yeah. 
We live. Okay. Okay. Wait, was that live at a time or? Mm -hmm. No, it looks like we're live now. Mm -hmm. Great. No, we're, we're live. It's just that the link that I'm tweeting won't start until the five minute mark. Oh. Isn't that great? So, like, yeah, we're live. But we're like, live. Mm -hmm. Let me entertain people while we're live. Yeah. It's 11 o'clock. This is what 11 o'clock at night guitar sounds like. Yes. It's time. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Oh, wait. No, no. That's not That's not how it starts. <clears throat> this is the first time we're doing it. Um, okay. Hello, America. I'm Susie Q. And today, I want you to know that I have two boyfriends. <laughs> I know, right? Two boyfriends. It's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> it is cool. And today you're going to meet one of them. Um, this one right here, Michael Vegas. Hello, everybody. Yes, he's my co host for the day. This we're my, like, we're like, my crouch. girlfriend, my partner. Yeah, here. Uh, Susie Q. Let's, let's and up, she's like fantastic. There we go. Yeah, okay. Like normal. Like normal. Like normal. Um, so we are live right now. I'm testing out YouTube's beta studio YouTube webcam. Um, we are, of course, from the adult film industry, so webcamming is something that's been part, a huge of our lives. part of our lives for some time. So welcome, everyone, who this is new for. Oh, hey, Lydia Dupra is Melina Mason. Um, hey, Lydia. Thank you for the shout out. Um, Lydia, huge inspiration to both of us. So if you uh, she is our mentor. pop on over and check her channel out too, yes, make sure subscribe. you go subscribe to her because she will give you valuable advice, love, and support. Yes, absolutely. And um, Michael also has a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. Um, we'll post it in the comments. And uh, he is very talented, as you were about to find out. So um, let's talk polyamory. Poly it's a hot topic right now. Um, lots of people are questioning and like, you know, I feel like a, lo like a lot of people have been cheated on. You know what I mean? And like, I'm just gonna let my hair down. We're talking about, we're getting real. We're talking about, um, poly stuff but yeah. I mean a lot of people are afraid of getting cheated on because a lot of people have been cheated on and they're like isn't there a better way isn't there a better way yes there is there is a better way there is a, there better, is way. a better way um okay so really quick about me um <laughs> even though you are our guest today um I feel like I have been poly or non-monogamous my entire life um I remember being like 
16 or 17, 15. I don't remember. Yeah, no, it, it was a little bit later. Um, but I had a boyfriend mm -hmm. and I had a girl I was dating as well. And we had been, the girl and I had been dating since I was like 15. And I remember I just couldn't understand like why my boyfriend was sad that I was like still seeing her sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I was like, aren't boys like, into that <laughs> i thought it was like i was doing it right but no he was really upset and his feelings were hurt because i hadn't like communicated and stuff and i kind of continued to run into that type of situation um for many years until someone gave me a book called the ethical slut ah. in college my um lgbtq like mentor person we'll make sure to post a link to that in the great book in the uh end of the video the downstairs yeah Somewhere. Um, oh, what is, what is I'm going to say? Michael, I took your advice and made a ho sticker. Yes. Beep, beep, beep. Love that. Where are your stickers? Yeah, let me show you my stickers. Michael is um, also a very talented graphic artist and photographer, and he made some stickers recently. They're super cute. He's made um, a couple. I'm very excited about my stickers. One of the things that I've always loved in my life is skate art and sticker art, and it's like this little enclosed piece of art that you can just like slap on something that's like you know it's just yeah. it's worth making a sticker it's like, out it's of. like a tag almost yeah exactly it's a tag that comes off so this is the newest one that i made pig daddy approved so when there's something that i like psh, approved approved i'm approved and this is my artist sticker that i made uh, I made this sticker while I was sitting in LAX airport about to travel to Texas. And I just, I remember, uh, I remember the eyeball sticker from Tony Hawk Pro Skater that you used to be able to put on things. And so I wanted a cool eyeball to slap on things that had my, <laughs> my name on it. Um, so tell, gone here today. talk about really quick about who printed these. And why that's oh, important and cool and give uh, them a shout out so this really great artist rob winchester you can follow him on instagram rob winchester art he makes this really cool like old throwback looking art and he's, he just runs a print shop and um you know i met him through our uh, mutual friend Dwayne, who we got to end up uh, Dwayne had to take off out of town with Storm Daniels and Rob hung back and showed us around New Orleans and showed us some cool jazz clubs. Shout out to Rob for that forever. That was such a fun adventure. Uh, we we'll post a link to the pictures also. We had some, some fun times. Yeah. Um, but I showed, I sent him this piece of art and he just had him printed for me, you know? Just like a buddy. Like a buddy. Like a total buddy. So now, this is going on my light stand. So anyway, um, back to the task at hand. So yeah, I, Polly has been a part of my life for a long, long time. Um, Michael, what about you? Polly mm. has been what I have needed in my life a long, long time, but was not something that was really in my vocabulary or within my understanding. Um, and it turned out that I spent 33 years failing at relationships, at romantic relationships, because what I needed was a polyamorous relationship and I wasn't honest with myself about it. And it caused a lot of hurt in myself and in other people, which is really the opposite of what I, what I was trying to do. I kept trying to tell people, like, I'm not trying to hurt you, I want this, like, let's not go down that road, let's not do that. And, you know, inevitably somebody always ends up uh, with some sad feels at the end. And I, I don't like that. No, 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 no. Uh, nobody likes bad feels. And, um, you know, just Polly doesn't fix all the bad feels, though, unfortunately. Still, it's true, it doesn't. Still, but it does open you up for communication. Yes. And communication can fix the bad feels. Yes. Yeah. I think that it's really not the multiple partners that necessarily uh, brings goodness into people's life when they start having non-monogamous non-monogamous relationships mm -hmm. it's just the communication that yes. like necessity that is necessary in order to have 
multiple relationships, be they just sexual and temporary or be they romantic and committed and long term. Mm -hmm. um, I have been in a relationship with my other partner, Sam Solo, for it will be seven years Love on this guy. 420. <laughs> we were, that's one of the last questions. Well, we can skip to that now if you want. I don't know. We'll save it. Okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so we've been together for a long, long time. Um, and, you know, he, I was already in that committed partnership when we met. And uh, even, you know, when we were just friends for many years, mm -hmm. like I was I was with Sam that whole time. Mm -hmm. So um, you came aboard two years ago and we're happy to have you um, for the record. I'm so glad I made the cut. I felt like I was auditioning. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> a little bit of an, I mean, like, right? She's got another boyfriend <laughs> that's a serious partner of hers. I'm not coming in to be like, yeah, get out of town, guy. I'm trying to be yeah. like, okay, she likes this dude. Obviously, there's something super great about him because I really like her and trust her opinions on people and things and stuff. And so I'm going to see what I can do to make this guy like me because I want to be friends with him too. And it worked, and he's awesome. But that's the last question, so. Oh. Oh, the queen. This is Callie. Hello, the queen. <laughs> We're so used to making adult film that, like, as soon as the animal gets in camera, like, oh, my God, no, 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 we have to. But YouTube, man, you want to see our pets? They're, They're great. Pets. We'll make a whole video about our pets. We, ooh, next week we should do just to meet the pets. Meet the pets. Meet, meet the, the pets. pets. We have three, but. Again, more on that later. This show is about Paul and Marie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, how did we meet? Well, we met on an adult movie set in, in a castle. And <laughs> as crazy as it seems, uh, we were portraying, and when I say we, I mean me and the five other scene partners other than you that were all males. I was the only girl. She was the only girl. There's a term for that, but I can't remember what it is right now. <laughs> um, and we portrayed a baseball team because it was one of her greatest fantasies to be a super fan that finally gets to meet all of her favorite players. Yeah. And the fantasy unfolded in a castle, which was incredible, amazing set, amazing director, amazing people. And, you know, one of my favorite things about uh, whatever it is that I can't remember the name of uh, is looking at someone's face, looking at, at her face specifically when it happened. And she was just the happiest really person like I've ever job. seen. And like... Wow, what a cool, amazing experience to get to go through with someone, and you know, made me, made me realize, like, yeah, she's playing for keeps. <laughs> I like this one. Like, let's be friends. Let's hang out. And so we started, uh, you know, we started hanging out years later. Mm -hmm. um, years. But that was how we met. That is how we met. So yeah, like right off the bat, it was uh, there were other people involved. It was uh, not. It was definitely a given. Mm -hmm. um, Callie, stop. Making it weird. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Why Why do we poly? Why? Why? I mean, can't you just be regular? <laughs> um, like. One of the reasons I found out that I should be poly is because if I'm not, I'm lying to someone. I'm either lying to myself or I'm lying to my partner. And neither of those is a healthy activity. No. And both of them lead to some serious hurt and more lying. Mm -hmm. And that is a no, no. Nay, nay. Do not lie. No, no. Um, I can't remember if, uh, if we coined this or it's actually in the play that we're about to plug. Um, one of our sponsors, the sponsor of this video. Um, but... You can, my, my boundary, and people have lots of different boundaries, you know, like don't ask, don't tell, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, the soft swap is something that people talk about in the mm -hmm. swingers community. Like, you know, you can make out and, you know, only go this far with somebody, mm -hmm. but don't do these activities because that's reserved for us. People do mm -hmm. all kinds of agreements. There's no one right or wrong way to right. do it. It's completely up to you. But my personal deal, my personal line is you can do anything with anybody else 
accept lie. Yeah. I can't lie with somebody. Mm -mm. That's not me. <laughs> not that, just like, you know, in general, like lie. I mean, the first word of my book is truth, truth, justice, and the American war by CCQ. Like I really value truth and Very important. that's, that's just, you know, that's the only one non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. I feel like for me. Oh. Love. Okay. Now we're going to plug our sponsor for this video, which is um, actually the, the thing that I took you. So years okay, later. Okay. So I have, I have to tell a story because okay, you this tell was story. like, this seriously, check for questions. this blew my mind because I, I could not for the life of me figure out how somebody had written a play about my life <laughs> at that exact moment in time. Um, so I'm hanging out with Susie Q. You know, I finally courted her enough to let me take her out. And she said, do you want to go see this play with me? It's like, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll go see a play. That's like, cool. Most people want to go see movies. I'd love to go see some theater with you. So I went and I saw this play called Monopoly. And it was so good. So good. Yes, here it is. Okay, get that closer so people can see it. Mm -hmm. Monopoly. You got that? Monopolytheplay.com. I'm going to type it in. I'm going to put it in here too. Yeah. It was really good. It's so good. Mm -hmm. So, written and directed by Brian Reynolds, a very talented writer, very, and he's been in a polyamorous, polyamorous relationship for how many years now? Almost 25. Almost 25 mm -hmm. years, and he's been making it work, and he understands polyamory and knows how to talk about it with correct language and with intelligence and not just dumb muggle questions. <laughs> pardon, pardon my crass language, <laughs> but... It, you know, he brings, he brings an intelligent conversation to the table for people that may not understand polyamory or are interested in trying it out or, or exploring it in some way. Or, or skeptical, know, skeptical or maybe even had a bad experience. You know, go see it with your partner if, you, if you're both unsure about it in, so, in one way or another. And it can educate you as to, you know, it's very educational on top of it, but it's so funny and so entertaining and like, yeah, the part that really blew my mind is one of the characters was named after a a key figure in my life. Like two of the characters named after oh, key yeah. figures in my life, and like one of the central themes was something that was from my life. Like, God, if you want to go see my weird life, go check out Bottom Polly. Like, yeah. I cannot yeah. recommend it enough. We're super right. excited. Yeah, um, super excited. I'm so ready for it to be on again, so I can go see it again. Yeah, it, there was it workshopped um, two years ago in twenty two years ago when we started dating in 2017. Um, but uh, this is actually the world premiere, a fully realized production with professional <sighs> actors, equity people, and on October 4th, I believe the which is Friday, this Friday, the playwright Brian Reynolds is going to be. Um, he's understudying one of the roles, and he's going to be playing his shower self is what he calls it, like the lead character. He's like, you know, it's the version of me that only says the things that I come up with in the shower that are so brilliant and good, but never quite think of in person. <laughs> but um, it's a great role. And uh, he'll be playing it on Friday night. And then I'm going to be interviewing him afterwards, along with one of his wives, who is also the executive producer. Um, so I'm really excited to A, see him act this part. He's an incredible actor as well as writer. Like we, he did um, a one night engagement at Fringe this year that I took you to. And it was like fire. It was yeah. called Sins. It was really, really good. Um, so that's going to happen on the 4th. And then the 26th of October, 2019 uh there's gonna be a poly meetup at the show and i'm gonna host a q a afterwards as well so if you're in los angeles come to the odyssey theater on one of those nights or anytime through um november 10th it's a six-week run monopolytheplay.com you can get tickets at tickets.monopolytheplay.com do it it's gonna be fun um okay so I would like to answer some common questions that uh, I get yes, asked about Holly for the comments all the time. But my first question for you is I want to hear you say gay things about my other partner. So, so, so. <laughs> but I mean, in general, how, 
has it been, you can be honest with me, how has it been having a partner with another partner? Have some water. <laughs> For me, it's excellent. I have been in so many relationships <laughs> where my partner wants me to do something differently that is not part of my typical character and changing mm. a behavior to try to include this in a manner that's like, I'm doing this for you. If I was doing it for me, I would have already been doing it. And it is great because the parts that my partners wish were there in me, they can get from other people. And it doesn't make me feel like less. It makes me feel in awe that this person does that regularly and it can help me learn to do it better and it can help me grow as a person. So like, I get benefits from it too. And it's like, of course you should like that. It's usually a really cool, great thing that I am lacking in some way or like could be better at or don't nail or you know, whatever the reason, aren't or just aren't for. available for. Like you can't be everywhere all the yeah. time. Like. And it's, so it's really, really great to have like, it's like a support team. Yeah. You ever done team sports? <laughs> They're fun. Yes. They're, They're super so fun. fun. They're so fun. Um, you know, I've just, I've never ever been of the mindset that people are limited in, in emotional resources when it comes to love and things they can give yeah. and like their ability to care for multiple people. You know, I've, I've always felt that I'm like, I truly love people. I really, really wholeheartedly love them, whether I'm in a relationship with them or not. And so if I can love one person this way, I can love another person this way. And a sexual relationship is not a love relationship to me. Right. It's, it's part, it can, it be, can part be part of it and it can mm -hmm. enhance it and it can be extra magical and extra special. And you know, you know, there are certain ways you connect with your partner in sexual encounters that are usually really incredibly special. But it doesn't mean that if she does it with someone else that what we did was any less special or any less magical or made me feel any less amount of great. Like, um, on top of that, I've always, like, I've enjoyed pornography. I've liked the idea of watching other people have sex. And so she's really great at sex. I would like to see her have sexual relations with other people in front of me. So again, I can see her, her enjoyment and her experience. You know, it's really, really nice to be able to openly share that experience with someone and to like see them really feel pleasure and like not make them feel guilty around feeling pleasure. It reminds you of like when we first met, right? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's really great. Yeah. No, um, do you, I'm going to teach y'all a word that maybe some of you already know, but, um, and I, you probably already know that you know what the opposite of jealousy is, right? What? Do you know the word for that? No. You don't? I don't think so. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, the opposite of jealousy is a word called compersion. Compersion. And that just means what, you know, the literal opposite of jealousy. It's when you get joy and feel pleasure um, when you see your partner engage in some activity with somebody else, you know, whether it's sexual, romantic, or otherwise, compersion. Um, there will be joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down <laughs> in my heart. When I see you juggle with um, Robbie Echo, I feel compersion because it's going to be a long time before I'm as good at juggling as Robbie Echo, if ever. And uh, I'm glad that you can have a juggle buddy. You know, and you feel compersion when I do I gotta, all kinds of things. I gotta go care for that dog. Oh, go go take care of, of the queen. All right. Well, everyone. This for now is gonna probably conclude my first stream. Um, it's been very fun. Uh, answering some common questions about polyamory and uh, yeah just introducing a slice of my little world to y'all 
please uh, subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so when I go live, it'll let you know. Um, but this video will live on my channel. Please follow me on all of the platforms. I am Suzy Q Media on Twitter and on Instagram. And um, you can also follow me on Snapchat, SQ Fan Club. If you want to support my work, um, I post photo sets and writing and blogs and articles that I'm featured in and calls to action and info about activism and such on my Patreon. So follow me, patreon.com backslash forecast. And until next time, y'all, it's been great. And this is Suzy Q. Signing off.